Today we're going to talk about graphing inequalities and why this is important is if you remember back to a couple videos ago when I first introduced inequalities, you know, the little song where I was like, way more than one solution, way more than one solution. Okay, inequalities have a ton of solutions. A little reminder that a solution is a number that makes the inequality true. So if we're thinking about an inequality, let's take y is greater than or equal to 3. We couldn't possibly list all of the solutions for that inequality because the solutions are infinite, right? 3 is a solution, 10 is a solution, 10 million is a solution. There are infinitely many solutions and we can't list them all so we graph them. It's so much better. Got a little carried away there, but what I mean is that we can show all the solutions to an inequality by graphing them. It's so nice. Step number one is to mark the number on the number line. But there are exceptions to people and there are rules. So think about this for a second, okay? There are two types of circles that we use when marking the number on the number line. The first one is called an open circle. We use an open circle, which is just a circle that's not filled in, for things like less than or greater than. When the number is not a solution, we use an open circle. When the number is a solution, we use a closed circle, which is one that's filled in. So that would be for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So for our example up here, y is greater than or equal to 3, we would use a closed circle on our number line because 3 is a solution. So we would say 3 is a solution, so we're filling it in. Okay, do you see how obnoxious that is? How big that is? How clearly filled in that is? I have a story to tell you about a very traumatic time in my math experience growing up. There too was a time when I was learning this information and I remember taking a quiz on this and I did an open circle or what I thought was an open circle. But guess what? My teacher marked it wrong and they said, this isn't an open circle, this is closed. Because I had a circle that was like this, it was a teeny tiny. And you know what? When, when teachers are grading fast, this might look filled in like that. Doesn't that kind of look filled in? And they don't have the time to argue. They don't have the time to figure out, is that closed? They don't, they don't get out their microscope and look at it. I wish they would, but they don't, they don't. And I'm not gonna do that. So if it's a closed circle, make sure that it's super filled in because I still remember missing that point on my math quiz, even though I know that it was open, but I don't blame them. And now that I'm a teacher, I really don't blame them. So don't expect to argue with us that, oh no, it was open, it was closed. Okay, make it obvious then, make it obvious. Story time is over, but man, it felt good to get that off my chest. Okay, back to math. So we have this example here. Y is greater than or equal to three. If your sign is greater than or equal to three, the last step that you have to do is you have to shade to the right. If it's greater than or equal to or greater than, you're going to shade to the right. Once again, make it really obvious that you're shading to the right. Okay, if it's less than or equal to, you're going to shade to the left, okay? So left is less than or equal to and greater than or greater than or equal to is to the right. You could also think, well, what would be a possible solution to this inequality? Wouldn't four be a solution? Yeah, four is greater than or equal to three. So that means that I would want my four to be filled in. So that means that I need to shade in the direction of whatever I decided was the solution. That's how I like to think of it. But you can also think, okay, if it's greater than or equal to, I'm gonna to shade to the right. If it's less than or equal to, I'm gonna to shade to the left. Another helpful hint that some people like to think about is do you see how this sign kind of looks like an arrow? Doesn't it kind of look like an arrow? The greater, the, yeah, greater than symbol? Well, notice how it's going the same way, the same direction that my arrow is going. Do you see that? Greater than or equal to, going the same direction as my arrow. That can be really helpful, but that only works when the variable is written first. So you have to be careful. But if you ever get an inequality where the variable is not written first, like for example, um, five is less than m, you can rewrite that to have the variable first, m, but just make sure the sign is going the same way. So see how the bigger section is towards m? That means that when I flip it around, I still want the bigger section of my inequality to be towards m. m is greater than five. Once you have it written like this, then that arrow rule will work. Let's do a couple more examples. So x is less than two, less than. That means that two is not a solution 
to this inequality, which means that I'm going to have to put an open circle, an obnoxious open circle at two, meaning a circle that is not filled in. And then X is less than two. So that means that one would be a solution, zero would be a solution. Well, which side of my number line are one and zero on? They're on the left side. So I'm going to shade to the left, okay, this way. I'm going to shade towards the left. And since my variable was first, that arrow rule works again, right? The less than symbol, since my variable first looks like an arrow, which means that I need to go to the left this way. Here's our last example that we're gonna do together. Negative four is less than or equal to D. So the first thing I notice here is that my variable is not written first. So my arrow rule would not work unless I rewrite it. So let's rewrite it with the variable first make sure that our symbol is staying so the bigger part was towards the D, I want the bigger part to remain towards the D. So D is greater than or equal to negative four. I just flipped it around, making sure to flip my symbol as well. D is greater than or equal to negative four. Now our arrow rule would work. So let's start by plotting the number on the number line, which is negative four. So we're gonna put a closed circle at negative four, closed because it has the equal to, and then our arrow will work, so we would go to the right, or we could think, well, what solutions would work? What numbers are bigger than negative four? Well, uh, negative three is bigger than negative four. Or we could even think, well, isn't positive three bigger than negative four, or positive four bigger than negative four? Yeah, so we need to go to the right. So we're gonna go to the right with our shading. Make sure you always put an arrow at the end showing that those solutions are gonna go forever in that direction, okay? Just a couple quick reminders. Open circles are used. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was ambushed in the middle of that, but just a couple quick reminders. Open circles are used when your number is not a solution. So greater than and less than. Closed circles, filled in circles, are used when the number is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to when the number is a solution and then remember with the shading the arrow only works when you are when your variable is written first otherwise you might just have to think about it and think well what solutions would work in this case you don't have to rewrite it unless it asks you to but if you want to use that arrow rule you have to re rewrite it to have the variable first all right, that's all I have for you. So time to go get payback on my husband, but uh, you guys have fun and let me know if you have any questions.